Splashlight Studios in Miami are sponsoring this first episode of my storytelling. Shit that really happened. <laughs> my life stories. Now this is a way of showing how I can promote your company out there or a product for a sum of money of course. And uh, here we go. And I wanted to say thank you to Splashlight Studios in Miami who helped me out with the job that I did with Julian Marley, a uh, son of Bob Marley. So thank you and respect. Now, to the story itself. Well, it started out in New York. I just moved there, ready to go to school for photography and ready to get a job as an assistant for a professional photographer. Now, I was totally fresh off the boat. I'd been there maybe two months and um, learning the hard way that living in New York is way different than coming as a tourist or just to visit somebody or whatever. But uh, it's a whole different ballpark to live there. And I learned real quick that uh, every homeless person has a script. So I don't know what Hollywood is doing. Why not go to, uh, to <laughs> New York, get a homeless person, get a script, pay a little bit of money and help somebody on the way and get a nice script because what they're doing now is just bullshit. But that's a totally different story. And uh, now to my story. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like I said, learning the hard way that in New York uh, is a tough city. And during the day, New Yorkers are mad. They're nuts. And uh, they have to be because everybody's hustling everybody for a dollar. Like, you gotta holla for that dollar. So um, I learned pretty quick that uh, uh, New Yorkers actually, even though they haven't done it yet, in their mind they have. So they're manifesting their future with their words, which is pretty good actually, and, and it works. So I learned quick that, you know, you gotta bullshit your way into things. But at night though, people in New York are the coolest ever. They're real party people with respect and they don't give a fuck, which is so cool. So New Yorkers, you awesome. So, and this is where the story starts, you know, me out at a fancy little artsy fartsy uh, gathering at a bar. How I got there, I don't know, and I don't care, but some people that I knew uh, were invited to this, so I tagged along. And there was this photographer that I heard, uh, was working a little bit, and I got his name from a friend there, and uh, you know, now I'm being a New Yorker, and I needed a job, you know, so. I approach him and I, you know, give him, him my little story that, you know, I'm fresh out of school, <laughs> even though I haven't started yet, and that I'm looking for an assisting job. And a little bit what I know, what I don't know, and stuff like that. And he goes, oh, kid, uh, what's your name? I said, what's up, Robert? Where are you from? I said, Sweden. And he goes, oh, you're European. Oh, that's so cute. You know, European. You I'm French! I was like, no shit, you're French. <laughs> of course, yeah, oh really, are you French? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and he goes, oh, well, you know, I don't work too much, you know, because uh, I'm not a commercial person, but when I get a job, I'll kill you, you know, I don't know when, but I'll kill you, give me a number. Said and done, you know, and two days later, me we're still recovering from that party, uh, because New Yorkers can party. <laughs> uh, he called and, you know, I got so surprised and he said, listen, we got this job, you know, we got to go to Bermuda for four days, an editorial job for a fitness magazine, an English one. I said, dope, really nice. Me playing it cool over the phone and I'm like, yeah, fuck your name, man. Bermuda, you know. So, okay, not really. So, um, so what's now? And he goes, in two days. Oh, in two days. That's really soon, huh? Can you do it? I said, yeah, of course I can do it. So he faxed over the equipment list and, uh, you know, where to pick it up. And then I call him. I said, all right, I got the fax. You know, I got the fax with the list. So I call him. I said, so where to meet you? And he gives, gives me a address. And I thought I got the right, right address. But he gives me an address on Fifth Avenue. And, you know, two days later, I'm there, 7 in the morning with the bags, picked up every equipment and all. 
you know, we Swedes are in time. So I was there at 6.45, 15 minutes before. And it's kind of cold because it's an April day, but I didn't bring a jacket because, you know, I'm going to Bermuda, you know. So I'm in a hoodie, army fatigues, standing there on the corner in this fancy neighborhood. I mean, it was like, I, I was real fancy on Fifth Avenue, uptown. And obviously I'm not the wrong address. But his French heavy accent just threw me off. Uh, so I, I'm sure that I'm at the right address, you know. So half an hour later, I'm, what the fuck, where is this dude? And I'm getting, you know, and like, a, this is pre-cellular phones. So I'm, I'm getting worried. I was like, fuck, man, we need to be at the airport at, you know, a certain time. And while I'm standing there, you know, all these fancy ladies are coming out, these door entrances with doorman and the little battery dogs like you know it's just like out of a movie and they're looking at me like I'm a crackhead you know I'm all shaved too and freezing because it's it's cold and <laughs> even a lady gave me a dollar she thought I was a homeless person I standing with my bags you know so and now it's like 45 minutes and, and I'm, I'm Thinking, fuck man, I gotta do something. So I walk over to the phone booth, call my girlfriend, and you know, tell her that he's he's not fucking here. He's not at the address. And she goes, "You idiot! You're at the wrong address. You fucking jump in a cab and get to JFK." So I do. I jump in a cab and I force this poor guy, a Dominican, you know, fresh out of his boat <laughs> in America, driving cab. And, you know, pushing him to drive as fast as he can to get to the airport. And he really did. I told him my story, you know, that I need to get this job. And I don't know. So I get to the airport. And it's a half an hour before the flight is leaving now. And I'm for sure that people have already started boarding, boarding the plane. And I am at the check-in counter. And there's this Caribbean beautiful lady standing there waiting. And there's no line. So, you know, I'm thinking it's closed. But I, I figured I got to try. So I do the New York thing again. I take it over the top. So I drop on my knees with the bags and like, please, and tell her the story. Like, you know, if I don't get this, uh, you know, if I don't get on the plane, you know, the French mafia will get me. I, I told her a whole story about, you know, me being killed and, nah, 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 and all in 10 seconds. And she looks at me and she goes, no, boy, you don't have to worry. You had me on your knees. <laughs> So she's real cool, she gets a walk in, she goes, yeah, then Mr. Learstrand is here, you know, and we, we get him on the flight, so no worries, him here. So I'm like, oh shit, she's hooking it up. So she closed the gate there, and the check-in gate, and we walk, and you know, she's taking it cool, and I'm like all stressed, like, don't we need to hurry to the plane? And she's like, no, don't you worry yourself, man. We are soon forward, you know, and, she started asking me questions about the job, and now I'm telling her the truth, obviously, you know, and that this is my first assisting job with this French arrogant <laughs> guy with his heavy, heavy accent. I couldn't get his address because that's how heavy accent he had, you know, and she was laughing. And then I hear on the walkie, where is Mr. Lerstrand? Is he on his way? And she goes, yeah, man, him, him running along next to me, you know, and <laughs> she was real cool. <laughs> So we get to the gate, everybody's boarded, I'm last in, everybody's sitting down in the plane, and you know, now I feel kind of, you know, it's embarrassing, I'm walking down there with, uh, along the aisle with my bags, and then <laughs> I find uh, the French guy there sitting there, and you know, and I go, sorry, and the, the, the look he gave me, he's like, I know for sure he wanted to rip out my head and fucking shit down my neck, I don't know what he wanted to do, but it was a bad look, you know, and I'm like, fucking sorry, you know, so I sit down, and for three hours on that flight to Bermuda, he didn't say a word, he didn't even look at me, he didn't look at any stewardess, nothing, I, it was the most awkward moment I ever had in my life, for three hours, he didn't say shit, nothing, not a beep, so I'm thinking, oh, fuck, I'm gonna work with this guy for four days, how is this gonna work, you know, so here we are, we're getting to the airport, uh, or we get to Bermuda, land, and you know, get to baggage claim, and <laughs> you know, I get the bags, everything is in order. So I tell him, you know, so everything's here, everything's cool. So he looks at me and he goes, Robert, um, you have a cigarette? 
And I said, no, nah, man, I don't smoke. And he starts hyperventilating, like, <laughs> and, and, you know, breathing. I thought he was going to die on me right there on the spot, you know. I was like, <laughs> and after a moment, you know, he calms himself down and he goes, Robert, that's true. Don't make it a third. <laughs> so that's the start on that trip. And there's more coming to this story. But that's on the next episode that we're going to show. Or, yeah, we, the promoter, or, and me, of course. And as I promised uh, in the future, uh, that I'm going to do some words of wisdom. And here is another one. My little trademark at the end of every show or, or episode that I'm doing. Um, and this is taken out of my head because I don't have my notebook with me, but it's another Bob Marley uh, quote that he said. He said, I had inspiration, I had no education. If I had education, I'd be a damn fool. So, yes, he had inspiration, he didn't have education. If he was educated, he'd be a damn fool. That's Bob Marley's wise words from me to you out there in the world. And thank you. And thank you, Splash Life, for sponsoring this life story of my life and this episode. Thank you. Bye-bye.